it comes to the scholarship, if you want to talk about scholarships, these are the two scholars at the forefront, Dr. William Darity Jr. and Kirsten Mullen. Anybody want to come up? I saw some people earlier, but I wanted us to get through the reading first before we um, bring anybody up here. Um, salute to the space, though. Thank you, Queen B. I see we got Permit. We got Miss T. We got Cornelius. Who did you boycott? I believe she was the first one in here. We got my brother, Brother Muko, Baltimore Freeman, uh, Nat Turner, the the B1 coon killer. He is a coon slayer, and I support that uh, coon slaying. We we have a lot of those among us, and we have to slay those coons. Uh, who else we got? We got everything black American. Tony, we got Tony. Good man, good man. Met him out there at the reparations rally. We got Shrugs, the Juan B. We got Gabe. Gabe is out there in Chicago um, for the Fifth Ward. Uh, I believe he's going for Alderman out there in uh, Chicago, Fifth Ward. I believe that um, that election will be on February 28th, if I'm not mistaken. So salute to him. He is a reparationist, from what I can tell, and an ally and an accomplice. Obviously, he is a white man, but uh, we have had a history of uh, some white men, very few and far in between, being allies. Thaddeus Stevens is one of them, and obviously the standard John Brown is the ultimate uh, white man ally. He put his life on the line in spite of him automatically benefiting from the system of white supremacy. We got Dr. Deborah Jenkins. I haven't seen her in a while, so salute to her. Uh, we got D. White, Special K, Dark and Lovely, uh, The Atavis, For Sale, Big Tree, Indiana, David, Fred, T. Wilkins, and uh, 5D and Queen. Um, it just says Queen, so salute to her. Salute to everybody up here. Brother Muko, talk black to us. What up, what up, what up? Shout out to Freeman for the space. Miss Queen B, lovely reader, lovely reader. I swear, y'all are talented, man. Both of you guys are talented. Um, I, I'm definitely interested in this book read, and I'm definitely following vigorously. Um, I've never read Dr. Darity's work. And um, hearing it from you guys, I definitely understand the height and the um, severity of the mission that we're doing now. So big ups to everybody in the room. Um, and Freeman, you must have just been reading my mind, bro, because I was about to ask, who's the white guy in the room? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm glad you cleared that up. Uh, Shouts out. I uh, looked at Gabe's page, and uh, I love to see. I, I like that he's a um, reparationist, but you know how I am. I, I always got to ask the question, that, uh, and um, I hope you don't. Uh, take no offense to this, but I have to ask Gabe, do you have a list, a uh, master list of uh, white individuals that you know to practice white supremacy? If you mind taking a mic coming up. Um, oh. Yeah, you know, giving us a list of some people that you might know to practice racism, white supremacy that we should look out for. You know, uh, racism, white supremacy is on the rise. And just like Dr. Dr. Darity just mentioned in his book, I mean, white supremacy has been dropping bombs on us, you know, uh, so it's real dangerous out here to be a non-white person during these days. So anytime that I get the chance to uh, come across or interact with a white person, I ask those questions and I just was wondering if you had any answers. Okay, Gabe, if you'd like to come up here and uh, answer that question, I'd be much appreciated, but... He was in a space with Marcel. Uh, i say he handled it very well. Um, the people on the ground in Chicago who I would have to defer to in the state of Illinois, they support uh, Gabe, particularly Marlon, uh, Arthur, Cynthia, and the whole Chicago crew. I'm sure even uh, Dr. Logic, the homie from BTP, he supports him as well. So, um, yeah, he's on the ground out there. Um, I do want to keep it focused on the book. But I appreciate that question as well, because I like to know names of who is the enemy. I point out the names all the goddamn time. I'm in New York City. Al Charlatan is one of them. Jesse Jackson is one of them. Uh, uh, Jeffries, Akeem Jeffries, uh, Inez Dickens, 
uh, Bill Perkins, obviously, Holtro. It's a lot of them out here. So, um, oh, Eric Adams. <laughs> we doing a lot over here, but there are people on the ground, in particular in the state of New York or the city of New York City. We have U.S. Freedman Project uh, advocacy group who specifies or uh, specifically advocates for the American Freedman. Uh, myself, um, Tony, Devon, we are the counter to that racism, white supremacy, and we are advocating for state acts of atonement out here. Arlene, Annette, and uh, Six, um, just to name a few, and even uh, Ali. Ali is out here in New York City as well. Ali is from uh, the Be the Power platform. So salute to the Be the Power platform, the United Sons and Daughters of Freedmen, and all of the advocacy groups in this movement. Um, yeah. Thank you, Brother Muko. Uh, I think Gabe is up here. Hold on, Gabe, before you go. Uh, Tony did get up here before you. So, Tony, did you want to say something? And then I guess Gabe can answer the question or uh, share his thoughts. Any thoughts about the book, uh, Tony? No, I'm actually uh, listening myself. I'm like Brother Muko. I'm following along, listening, and I'm really learning some new things, too, as well. And um, I'm really happy that you and Brother Muko are having these uh, – book readings and everything they help refresh my memory on a lot of things so i do appreciate it and thank you queen b for being the orator of the book and uh friedman always throwing in you know his jewels where he sees fit because he do drop jewels i will say that and uh since we are going to keep it to the book uh i'll just leave it at that for right now um because i'm just like brother muko like it wasn't just the one white dude. There's two of them. <laughs> so y'all know I be keeping my eyes out for that type of thing. And uh, you got another white man in here. Yeah, CS. He down there at the bottom with his look. His 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 right his, his, his uh glow in the dark self. I can see him. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. When when you get when you get him up here, man. Uh, which I'm gonna drop back down to listening because you know I just want to listen. You know, sometimes I like to just listen in. Uh, it's funny to me too, that, uh, these white faces always come in black spaces and when it, uh, suits their narrative to support what they're trying to do and everything. And, uh, I just, just find it weird that they, they always find themselves around us. Um, so I'm gonna just leave it at that. I don't want to go too deep into it, but I'll just let y'all do what y'all got to do. Yeah, I understand. Um, we just lit. So wherever we go, white people follow. I think it was you who said uh, black people are never alone. Oh, yeah, <laughs> white, you know it. You know it. We are <laughs> never <laughs> alone, people, God damn it. Everywhere uh, we go, we are never alone. We are on fire, most definitely. Um, but uh, Gabe, Gabe, salute to you, Gabe. Uh, thank you for um, joining us. Uh, did you want to chime in and add? to the discussion or answer the question. Yeah, absolutely. And um and thank you so much for the opportunity to say a couple of words. For for folks who are just generally curious about what what's going on with me, uh Mar Marcel was kind enough to host a um yeah. space that I I was in. We talked for about three hours about my candidacy and my relationship to reparations. I'll just mention because it is true that uh you know, there are Johnny come, come latelys that show up and try to figure out how to exploit going uh, interest in, in the black community. That's all, always been the case. My my participation began in 1986 and really before that, but only as a, a child learning from my my father and grandfather who were involved in um, ally work and, and work in, in, in cooperation with um, black folks. Uh, but. I'll just say I do have a list. You know, what's interesting about uh, white supremacists in Chicago is they, they steer clear of me in reparations spaces and discussions about reparations and the work that I'm doing in reparations. We the way the way we flushed them out was a kind of an end run. So I also do work in um, I do, you know, support and allyship with the indigenous community and have an organization, an Italian American civic organization that supports the removal of Columbus statues, the removal of Columbus Day and the Columbus Parade, that's where they come after me. So 
once I get the a beat on them, I see, you know, their anti-black racist behavior is clear. It's just that they have kind of steered clear of me um, in, in that nonsense because I do have relationships, deep relationships. I've been on the South Side for 24 years um, and I won't come by myself. I'm not a typical kind of, you know, white liberal um, kumbaya. You know, I'm feeling good about myself, but I don't really do anything. Um, uh, liberal, so- soft, racist, uh, liberal. I I will bring community with me if you're in a space and you're engaged in anti-black racism. Will respond as a as a group of people, and they don't want that. They don't want that as as kind of crude and um, clumsy as white supremacists appear. Hold That's on. an act. Hold on, Gabe. You said you got a list. I do, so I can I I can put it together. Point that out. Point it out right now. Yeah, so I can put that together. Uh, that's something I could even do this evening. I could definitely give you the top 10 in Chicago, people who have um, demonstrated, you know, clear. And, and it's no surprise. They're, they're cops and they're uh, proud boys. And, and they've, they've reached out, you know, they, they've uh, engaged me in uh, pretty aggressive ways. And, and then through that interaction, I know who I'm dealing with, I start to follow their movement and talk to people about them. And um, and it's basically a combination of, of, when I say police and Proud Boys, that suggests those are two separate groups. They're really not. It's in, in Chicago, they're virtually identical with a small, um, a small exception. Okay, no problem. And we will be up here for a little bit. My phone seems to be uh, getting better. So I'll be up here for a little while longer. Uh, thank you. Gabe, and if you have time, maybe you can even put that in the Megatron or the Jumbotron or the chalkboard, and uh, we can see it publicly. But um, also put uh, your information as well in the Jumbotron and the Megatron. I know you did put your actual, like, your, your phone number and your email, too, so we can actually get a list, get that list documented in our emails, and we can uh, personally directly call you, and let's get this information going. But um, thank you, Gabe. Um, and Gabe, I hit you with a follow as well. And definitely hit me on the back channel because I need that list exclusively. Thank you. Thank you, Friedman. No problem. Thank you, Brother Muko, for asking the question. Uh, Gabe, yep, I have added you as well. And uh, yeah, you can add me back if you so choose. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hold on. We got another white person in here. Uh, before we get to the lady, Miss P. I met Miss P, beautiful woman. And this boycott, he's a rider, he's a real one. Uh, we have a CS Constitutional uh, Solutions. So, uh, CS, um, do you support direct cash payments for the American freedmen? Infinite direct cash payments for the American freedmen. So, um, just real quick, thank you for allowing me up on stage. I'm not... Yeah, hold on, hold on. Before you go to the real quick and the explanation, I ask you a simple yes or no question. Do what was you... the last word? Because I don't know if I know the definition of it. That's the issue. So, so I'll, I'll ask you again. Do you see us support infinite direct cash payments for the American freedmen? Who are the American freedmen? They are the descendants of persons enslaved in the United States, the descendants of the Emancipation Proclamation, the descendants of the 40 acres and a mule. Go. If I can break down and understand how to correctly do so, I, I, I believe that it should be done. Do I, I, I can't give you a definite on that because I, I have not thought of the logistics of it. That it, problem solving is my business, what, what I'm able to do. And why I came here because Miss T invited me. Okay, fair enough. So think about how the Jews get infinite direct cash payments. So. The Jews get infinite direct cash payments. So just replace Jews with American freedmen. See how that works? Are you in America, I, I, by the way? Yes, I, oh, I am. Queen B, did you want to say something? No, I was just going to say I'm glad he's here because, you know, we, and that he's here to learn because, you know, when as we break down this book, you will know exactly, you know, uh, what all that in, entails. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
And that's oh, yeah. hey everybody. Uh, that's on, exactly on, why I invite on, so people hear me talking. Thank you. So um if you want to learn CS, we appreciate that. So the US government and reparations as far as eliminating the wealth gap between the American freedmen population and all other Americans because we are at the bottom, particularly European Americans, European Americans who look like yourself, uh that is what reparations is on a national, federal level. So it's up to the United States government to pay it because the United States government has sanctioned slavery, Jim Crow, redlining, and you know the rest of the history. And if you don't know, now you know. But um, the logistics of that would be a part of it. A part of it would be direct cash payments, just like everybody else um, gets whenever reparations is uh, paid out to. So... For example, <clears throat> according to Dr. Darity, I believe the amount is $14 trillion baseline. That's the baseline. So we're not opposed to more, but at the very least, it is $14 trillion. So um, each individual American freedman, which is counted to be about $40 million, probably more, most likely, but with the numbers we do have, that would mean $350,000. $350,000 per American freeman over the year uh, over the, over the span of 10 years. So, now that you got some details and some context, is that a yes or no? Do you agree? Do you support since you uh, about solutions? That was a solution. So, yes, that question was to you. It it just unmuted me. Sorry. Um I'll tell you I would 100% be behind it if I thought money fixed problems. But I think that we need community change, governmental change, and community systems that give those uh, populations that are disenfranchised the systems that are kept from them because of how expensive they are to learn and gain the knowledge in their God-given gifts so that they look it, it's okay, the so same hold as hold on so what you're saying is you do not support direct cash payments i would now argue that you are an anti-semite because the jews get direct cash payments and and that has been fixing a lot of their problems um so um I, it sounds like you would be an anti-american freedman racist because it seems like when it comes to us getting direct cash payments. And again, reparations is not limited to direct cash payments. It's also restitution. It's also uh, satisfaction, which means guarantees of non-repetitive harms, which means guarantees of no more gentrification, guarantees of no more war on drugs, guarantees of no more war on poverty, guarantees of no more redlining, um, land grants, uh, tax exemptions, just like a lot of other people, in particular when it comes to the tax exemptions. Um, the Native Americans. So yes, money does fix problems. We live in a white supremacist capitalist society. So if now all of a sudden you don't think money fix problems, you want money right now, right? CS, because you have a bill to pay, and that money would fix the problem of your bill. Yes. Can I uh, state the? Uh, no, you cannot, because I asked you a question. If you're going to avoid questioning, then we no, don't No, so I, I don't believe that money should be the thing that fixes my, my bill issue. Um, I think that the utility should be God-given gifts. Um, I don't think uh, I should have to I pay. I don't know what that means. Utility should be God-given gifts. I, I, I have absolutely no idea what that means. You have a bill that needs to be paid. And you're not going to your uh, person who you owe. Uh, okay, sir. Um, utility and God-given gifts. That's that's what I'm going to do to fix this uh, issue that I have. Uh, money is a variable, and uh, it's a necessity. It's a necessity. You know this. We're not going to play games. Um, if you can't answer questions respectfully, we cannot have a discussion. See us. We can't have an honest and open dialogue and discussion, then we can't uh, move on. So um, it sounds like to me, from what I'm hearing, because I've been actively listening to you, 
you do not support direct cash payments for the American freedmen. And I will call you an anti-Semite because by that logic, you would not support uh, reparations, direct cash payments for the uh, European Jews for the Holocaust. So if you don't support our uh, direct cash payments, then you don't support uh, direct cash payments because according to you, money doesn't fix problems. So um, just going to have to move on from you right now until we can have an open and honest discussion and, and, and you at least start answering some questions and not beating around the bush. This is an American freedman space. We prioritize the American freedman in here. And that's just what it's going to be. That's just what it is. That's what it will always be when I'm running a show and when my American freedman people are in this space and we are organizing and building. So respectfully, um, I'm going to just drop you down a listener you can uh, listen and learn. We did read from here to equality, reparations for black Americans in the 21st century. So I want to get to my Freeman family now. <clears throat> Hold that thought, Gabe. I know you spoke. I want to get to um, who did you boycott today? And uh, Miss T, I have met Miss T personally. So she's a good one. Okay, she stepped away. But here you go, Miss Boycott. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Brother Freeman, for the space. And thank you to the co-host, Miss Queen B, for the reading. And uh, thank everyone else that came in to listen. I uh, just wanted to come up and uh, thank you for that. Uh, one point that you made that I just wanted to uh, speak again about, and that's the education of the Freeman and the reparations claim. It's paramount. Absolutely paramount that the masses of us who are descendants of slave ancestors get this education to understand at the core as to why we are making this claim and why we are fighting for this claim for all these years. It's so many of us who do not even have a clue, like myself, I just learned about it in August of 2020. So I finds out that this fight been going on since the mid around the 1980s. It was a shock to me. So uh, as I listen to this book, I have not read this book or ordered this book, but uh, I'm gonna listen very carefully and most likely will end up ordering this book for my personal library uh, it's hard to put into words how much work we got to get done to put the pressure on these sorry human beings as I listen to Queen B read off Rosewood and uh, how all those people died over 300 people 300 people lost their life, 1,200 homes, schools and hospitals went to the ground, was burnt to the ground. It was just heartbreaking. That's just a tip of the iceberg of how many of us has died over these centuries and decades. And yet they still want to deny a justice claim. How in God's name do they sleep at night? How in God's name do they wake up? I do not know. But we're going to just have to dig in deep and try to make sure as many of our people get this education, like Freeman said, because so many of us do not have a clue how much our bloodline has lost and what has put us in the predicament that we wake up to that our kids have to look at us struggle every day they have to watch the pain in our face all because some sorry human beings diabolical evil human beings set on a mission to destroy one race of human beings. So thank you, Freeman. You know I could go further, but I'm going to 
Hold back since of your room today, huh, uh, sir. You know how much respect I have for you, so I'm toning it down. Thank you. You ain't never got to tone it down in my space. I want you to spit that freedom and fire, spit that freedom and flame, because these spaces are for the American freedmen, especially who prioritize us here. So, as usual, I appreciate you, Miss Boycott. And uh, you could call me honey. It sounded like you was going to call me honey. So, I appreciate you. I got respect. What's up? That was a misspoke. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's all love. It's all love, Miss Boycott. Thank you so much, and I appreciate your 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 passion and your love and compassion and energy and intensity for our American freedom and family. So thank you so much, Miss Miss Boycott. Um, we have Miss T, who is next, and uh, any thoughts about the book? Because we did read a lot. Salute to Queen B. Great, great, great young lady, beautiful woman, inside and out, and she did a great job. This is her first time. Um, hosting a space and co-hosting, so I think she did great. I know she did great, and uh, hopefully next time, um, she would like to read to us again. Miss T. Hey, hey, Prime. Thank you for hosting the space, Queen B. Awesome, awesome job. Um, I did send out a mass uh invite. I sent out an invite to about twenty five people. Uh, three of which were white because I thought, as Queen B said, I thought this was a great um, learning space. Um, now that I know Prime, I probably won't be doing that again because now I understand how you ha how you handle your spaces. That gentleman today, he is twenty six years old and he's for reparations but he's like most uh, or a lot of white people I hear they're like well how are we going to pay for it that's not really our concern how you pay for it that's because the debt is old so I invited him to this space because I felt like him hearing Dr. Darity's uh, book would be very educational and the uh, other person was one by C or something like that. Yeah. I so think this would be a great space for the them. Miss T, let's stay focused on the actual book. We got from okay. I'm going. I'm going to that. But I was just letting you know that I invited them. If That's they why they're here. Because a lot of white people always talk about educate, and uh, boycott is absolutely right. The education and the elevation of the consciousness is key, and this is what we're doing here in this space. We read a lot of passages, and this book is really a, a historical book. It talks a lot about the history. What are your thoughts on the uh, the book, though, uh, Miss T? Have you gotten the um, second edition? Again, this is the second edition. This is the second edition, and the uh, first uh, original book was that was really good too. Yeah, I I do like this um, edition. The only time I kind of cringe is every time he mentions African American. Uh, did you say that in this book he did change over to Friedman? Well, I read the first book, and um, and I noticed in this book uh, the language in here is also Friedman. He uses African American. That's for more so I would say a shared understanding because if a white person like. Uh, who was that white man who was in there earlier? C.S. He's not going constitutional, to what, right? He's not going to understand what an American freedman is, even though I just explained it to this. So prior to this conversation, he won't understand what an American freedman is, but he'll know exactly who we're talking about when you see the words. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, but Doctor yeah. is African American. It's a shared understanding among the masses. Yeah, so, so far it's great, very educational. Queen B has a very soothing voice, but it does keep you up, especially when I'm in traffic. But um, great job, and um, I'm looking forward to the next reading. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Miss T, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, reading some more. Maybe uh, next time I'll read it this next time, or maybe me and Queen B will do half and half or something like that. But yeah, Queen B, you're doing a great job. Anything you want to add? Queen yeah, we can tag team next time. Uh, but I but I actually do have a thought, um, you know, after taking all this information in and I can, I can tell you that I can see why a lot of the older generation 
um, you know, are discouraged about us getting reparations. Because if you, you know, if you read all these failed attempts, I can see where they would start to, after a while, they would give up. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we as this new generation need to revitalize and re-energize and, you know, um, just keep on, keep on moving and keep pushing for it. Mm-hmm. Understood. Well, a lot of the older people are not even aware of AB 3121. They're not even aware of SB 189 and the uh, national push for um, American freedom and reparations. So uh, a lot of them, they may be self-defeating or just doubtful which is understandable. At the same time, people like yourself and Race of Bo, salute to you, Race, I'm going to you next. We are on the ground and we're advocating and we will get reparations. We're demanding it and we will get it with great advocacy, great education and elevation and understanding. And of course, since Gabe is in here, with some allies now, again, most white people are not allies and accomplices to justice, in particular the American Freedmen Justice. But we appreciate the very few and far in between white people who are allies to our American freedmen justice. So that would also include uh, maybe some uh, Caribbean allies like Dr. Jovan Scott Lewis, Caribbean ally like I'll even say TD uh, Hip Hop. Um, yeah, TD Hip Hop. Uh, I think his name is Tony Delerme or something like that. And uh, I call them the Hubert Harrison consciousness. Hubert Harrison was an ally, most definitely. He worked diligently with uh, our American freedman ancestor, Asa Philip Randolph. So, um, and we know Asa Philip Randolph was a real one. So, um, but thank you for that, Queen B. And we are out here on the ground. Um, Racer, Toretto, what's good, man? A uh, peace, brother Prime, what's happening? Sister Queen, what's happening? Peace, peace to the room, everybody. What's going on? We here. We are blessed and unstoppable. I am blessed and unstoppable. How are you? I'm good, brother. Uh, I have seen your space up, and uh, I seen Mister uh, uh, Gay Pamante in the room, and uh, he's actually been in a uh, uh, in a few discussions uh, in some of our reparation spaces, hmm. and uh, even though it's not the topic of the room, you know, with uh. Uh, Brother Prime, with you and uh, Queen B's permission and Mr. Pomate's permission, I would like to engage in, uh, and ask the, the candidate hopeful for uh, Fifth War Elderman in Chicago, which I believe is the Woodlawn section, a uh, couple of questions, if it's all right with everybody. Sure, you can. But hold on. Before you get to the questions, let's address the topic. What are your thoughts on the book, From Here to Equality, Reparations for Black Americans in the 21st Century? I don't know if he was here while uh, our lovely Queen Bee was reading, but uh, she was dropping some gems. Uh, Dr. Darity and Kirsten Mullen were dropping some gems, some history, some information in there. You want to uh, chime in? Want you chime in on that? Then we can uh, assume Gabe. You, you you on fire too? Everybody wants to talk to you. Then we can talk to Gabe for a little bit, and then I gotta head out. But let's let's get to it. Uh, yes, unfortunately, when it comes to uh, Dr. Derrity's work, uh, From Here to Equality, his book, uh, I've only uh, been able to actually uh, basically give it a gloss over when it comes to work and not actually uh, read it with an analytical eye. So um, uh, if you don't mind, Brother Prime, uh, at this particular juncture, I would like to, uh, you know, to just uh, hold on to my opinion on uh, Dr. Derrity's work. I can respect that. I appreciate that. And I, I thank you for your honesty. Uh, we have integrity as American freedmen. You basically said, I mean, I haven't read too much, so until I get more information, I don't want to give any uh, uninformed opinion. So I can respect that. What, what did you want to um, ask Gabe? Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Pomonte, are you there? Yes, I am, sir. Yes, Mr. Pomonte. Um, how you doing? My name is uh, Ray Sabo. Uh, you could call me Racer, you could call me Bo, or you could call me both, or you could call me Mr. Ray Sabo. Um, uh, you, uh, uh, my question for you is, um, uh, it, it, well, for, first, uh, for clarity and for the room, uh, do you mind sharing your ethnicity with the uh, Foundational Black American Freedman family? Absolutely. I'm Italian-American. Now, was that on both sides of your lineage or just your mother or just your father? 
It's a uh, majority, my father's side, and it is by lineage in the sense that I was raised Italian American. That's to say, all of our cultural um, practices were Italian American. You know, uh, my parents were married in the 50s, so um, that you you kind of conform to the uh, the husband's culture. And so I was raised around my father's side of the family. We you know, we're in Italian American spaces and culture. So I identify as Italian American, although uh, if you did a, you know, 23 and me, I might be 52, 53% Italian. Okay, I appreciate you. And, uh, to, uh, Neapolitan or Sicilian? Neapolitan. <laughs> you got it on the first try. Actually, east of Naples, Avellino, which is a little hill town east of Naples. Okay, got you. So if I'm not mistaken, according to history, was the isn't Naples the capital of Italy? Uh, it's not, but you know, Naples is kind of known for there's a there's kind of two strong political philosophies that come out of Italy. One everyone knows is fascism, but really anarchism, which kind of has a bad reputation, is more like limited government. Kind of came out of. Um, came out of Naples and, and Naples uh, was a, is a very vibrant uh, seaport and um, has, has a very strong kind of diverse ethnic background and is known for a, a fisherman by the name of Masaniello um, stopping the government, basically kind of going into the center of town, um, you know, many centuries ago and saying, why are we letting these people kind of run us down and decide what's happening when we, when we make the, bread and we we bring in the fish and we and he and it was that sort of um you know bottom up philosophy that came out of, of Naples. So at one time it was if not the center, it was a strong center of gravity and respectfully, can we get to the topic though? What, what did you want to ask? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hold on, because now we over here talking about Italy and Neapolitans. I'm here to talk about reparations for the American Freeman. Did you want to ask him anything specific pertaining to uh, reparations? Yeah, I'm so, my, my bad, Brother Prime. I, I didn't mean to, um, uh, you know, hold up the room with no word salad. So I, I, let's just get to the serious questions. Uh, Mr. Pomonte, um, how long were you aware of the reparations movement? And uh, via what uh, avenue did you uh, receive enlightenment about the reparations movement? And um, what are your views on reparations uh, not only on the federal level, but the state and, state and local as well. Uh, so I, I became aware of reparations in the 80s um, as an undergrad. Uh, Mudavana Patterson was my uh, mentor in, in undergrad, and we, and we were involved in the secession movement uh, for Roxbury, uh, a, a neighborhood in, in Boston, um, which which tried to separate from, from Boston, and there's kind of a long story behind that. But it was essentially um, black folks trying to establish their own, own their own um, city and own the resources of the city. And uh, and Mudavana, as, as he explained it to me, put that in the broader question of um, an obligation that was owed, owed to the the people who um, the black folks living in America who were descended from black enslaved black American citizens um, that. That is a very different world that the idea of reparations in the 1980s, where it was almost like a fringe concept to a lot of people. It was very different from more recently. And um, to be very honest, I, I was kind of brought into contemporary reparations just maybe five or six years ago because I was talking about it. And then in my campaign, I was talking about reparations. And there were some ADOS folks at the time we're talking about four years ago. And so um, uh, Marlon Watson, who a lot of folks here know, uh, Arthur Ward and, um, and uh, Linda Jennings, who's not as uh, active on the national scale, but in social media, but is a very uh, engaged reparationist, um, kind of brought me into the movement in that way. And, and uh, we, we did some work together. And well, what happened happened with ADOS. And now here we are. And, and I, uh, I kind of align myself with other people. <laughs> and salute to the people you do align yourself with Arthur Ward, Cynthia, Marlon, um, and the uh, 
Chicago. They're people. giants. They're amazing people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Race, uh, uh, one last question. And I want to get to uh, Almighty. Uh, he's been yeah, but I, I never got my question answered about um, uh, Gabe's thoughts about reparations being paid not only on the federal level, but also the state and, and, and local as well. Okay, so my last my last uh, thoughts on on, on this, and, and sorry to take up so much time. Uh, so I believe that reparations, um, for strategic reasons, and also just as somebody, I, I'm a, a writer and an editing uh, editor and a writing coach for a living, um, is a proper noun. I mean, as a as a as a common noun, it can mean any. You know, you can uh, make reparations with your wife for coming home late for dinner. But as a proper noun, I believe it's a federal um, obligation. Uh, states have an obligation to um, to commit to and and practice reparative justice for their and in, the injustices they're responsible for and their part in the oppression of um, of freedmen. Uh, and, and similarly, uh, on the municipal level, and that's actually part of our platform is pursuing reparative justice um, in terms of housing. In the city of Chicago, but I don't. I believe it's problematic to. I follow Dr. Darity's interpretation of the idea of reparations, which is that it's problematic to have these state commissions. In fact, in Illinois, we have a state commission, and the governor appointed a man whose family has a slaveholder in his ancestry. And when we brought it up to him, if they blew up at us, like we were doing something wrong by bringing it up, so. That's what you're going to get on the state level, in, in my opinion. Familiar, and you're talking about Governor, I believe his name is Pringzer or something. He's a European That's right, Pritzker, J.P. Pritzker. Um, who, yeah, who, who may become a presidential candidate. Yeah, he's a European Jewish uh, white supremacist, and he put uh, some slave, a descendant of uh, slaveholders, on the, um, uh, what was that, task force or commission or something, and then... Right on the commission. People like uh, when people who's on the ground, like uh, Evanston, rejects racist reparations. A good elder out there says, "What are you doing? This is this is crazy. This is insane. You got a slave owner over here talk about uh, reparations for the American freemen, and then he he snapped back at them and those other organizers. It's it's it's, it's ridiculous. So yeah, he's a piece of shit. Uh, uh, J B. Pring Pring Pring. I always get his last name wrong. But yeah. Yeah, okay, so 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 great. so just so just to, I'm I'm sorry about the problem. So just to be clear, Gabe, it is your uh it is your position that uh reparations shouldn't be paid on the state and local level, but only on the federal level. Reparative justice. I I'm it's a distinction by name, not by what should happen. So if you and I agree that the state of Illinois owes uh I, you know five hundred billion dollars to freedmen. But I say it's reparative justice and you say it's reparations. Um, you could say I don't believe in reparations on the state level, but I still want that money paid. So uh, it, it may I don't know. It, to me, it's an important distinction. I don't think we end up. So, look, if J.B. gets to a point, slaveholder descendants, that becomes a federal potentially that could be a part of a federal policy. And then he gets elected president because we've said you can have state level reparations. We've allowed governors who don't care about freedmen to make policy. And and what I believe is that that's just a strategic in error. Other, in other words, what we're saying is, and I, I understand Dr. Darity's position, um, we're really controlling the narrative. To call state acts of atonement reparations, that's where the uh, error is, because when we're talking about reparations, race, and I know we agree on this, uh, we're talking about eliminating the wealth gap the lineage wealth gap for the American freedmen population and uh, everyone else in the country, in particular European Americans. Now, the state acts of atonement cannot do that. <clears throat> so that's why they don't want to call it reparations. Also, when you frame it as reparations, then the narrative now becomes, well, California gave reparations, so why does the national or the U.S. government have to pay reparations? So what we're really trying to do is control the narrative and just say reparations is only exclusively on the national federal level and it's by way of eliminating the wealth gap. These states, they cannot eliminate the wealth gap. That's all. So I think we uh, uh, all agree on that, but uh, 
what he's saying is or what I'm so saying. So, is so, that so, we so I pose uh, state acts of atonement. That's what we're saying. Call it. State so, okay, no, I, I get what you're saying. I just want to be clear on uh, Gabe's uh, position. So it's it's not necessarily the action of uh of uh you know restorative justice uh by the way of um cash payments but it's the language in describing the act you said it just right yes sir perfect okay well yeah well i have more questions but you know out of respect of the room and respect of people's time I, I, i'll yield for the moment no doubt and if you have more questions uh marcel had a great space with him i think it was yesterday or the other day um you can listen into that space. He answered a lot of these uh, very exact same questions. But since I fucked with you and you my homie, uh, I wanted you to ask him directly and y'all can engage. Uh, Raisa, so salute to you, Raisa Toretto. Out here in New York City, also advocating for state acts of atonement. So hold on. Thank you so much, Almighty, and thank you, Gabe, for answering. Almighty, you've been very patient, so uh, I would like for you to say what you have to say, then we can go to true and then lie in it. Hey, what's up, brother? Uh, peace to the room. Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment about, I thought this, uh, at first I thought the, the title of the room was, you know, you guys just chopping it up about, you know, reparations in the 21st century, but I, but I overheard it. It's actually a book, so I'll definitely be looking into that. But uh, I also, I wanted to mention, you know, not off topic, but, you know, reparations in the 21st century, I think the misconception is they think that a lot of us are like looking for handouts, you know, that we're poor, this and that, which, uh, you know, there is a lot of free men that are, you know, living in poverty still. But, you know, what about the middle class black people? Right. We went to school like we went to get jobs and shit like the people that, you know, they worked hard. But then like shit, we still got to pay taxes to the government like it's like you work, they owe us, but we paying them. And it's just like as tax time is coming up and shit like that, it's like, why do I owe the government that didn't do anything for me to get in this position? But now I have to, I owe them money. This is insane. Like, it's really insane. And it's just, you know, we got to pay to go to school and we're just on the same lens that they are. And... You know, something's got to give, and, you know, it's a lot of, you know, white supremacists go around, like, oh, you know, y'all just want handouts. Nah, nah, it's they, the ones that they should really be concerned about are the people that got, you know, they did all the bootstrap business, and then they realized it wasn't nothing but a bunch of lies. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. And you made a good point. Um, if you look at my profile pic, one of them is, the difference between um, white wealth and white income and black wealth or freedman wealth and freedman income, uh, it's not the same. So in other words, American freedman woman who has just graduated from um, college with a bachelor's degree is earning less money <clears throat> than a white man who has absolutely no high school diploma which is why national reparations is needed on a federal level. So, um, yeah, great point, almighty, and thank you for that. Please check into it. We spoke a lot about this yesterday where I was reading uh, from here to equality, reparations for black Americans in the 21st century. Yes, it is a real thing. It is a real book, and it is the Bible, the Quran, the Talmud, the Hadith, whatever you want to call it, for reparations for the American freedmen. So, <clears throat> Um, check that out. It's by Dr. William Darity and Kirsten Mullen, two great American freedmen reparationists, especially when it comes to the scholarship. So, true, are you an American freedman? Um, I ain't got no other choice but to be, because that's in my blood, and that's what I walk, and that's what I do. That's how I live and breathe, and so is my children. How are you? I'm blessed and unstoppable. Your thoughts on the book, From Here to Equality. Uh, were you here listening when uh, Miss Queen Bee was reading to us? No, I just came in like the last like mm, seven to eight, maybe ten minutes. Not even that far. Okay, no problem. Have you read the book uh, yourself? Have you done some educational due diligence? Or what are your thoughts? 
about I live. Oh, you want to be so upset with me? No, I have not read it, but just living through life. And I wanted to ask um, Gabe a question. Would that be okay with you? Actually, yes. Uh, 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 oh, no, no. Uh, this... I, I'm done. No, we're not doing questions with Gabe today. We're talking about reparations for black Americans in the 21st century. That's and what that's I what I wanted to talk about, if it was okay. Right. So let's talk about reparations for black Americans in the 21st century. Gabe did not write that book. Okay. Yes. So within that, Gabe the conversation, not. if Gabe, you could kind of chime in, I'm going to need your um, expertise because me and my mother, we were just having a conversation this morning. I lived around Italians like on my... Hello, did you hear what I said? We're talking about reparations for black Americans in the 21st century. Now, when I just said that, you went directly to Gabe as if you just ignored everything that I just said. Do you want to add to that discussion as far as uh, reparations? We're not here to talk to Gabe. Gabe has answered questions already. But if you want to go to the space where uh, Marcel and he had a great space, I think it was yesterday or the day before, and he asked a lot of questions. Maybe, Gabe, you and I, or, or someone else, we can do a space where we just call it Ask Gabe or something. But that's not what this space is right now. I know we got a white man in here. People love, uh, uh, they get uh, enamored when white people is here. But this is about the American freedmen. This is about the American freedmen. And Gabe, from what I can tell, and from the people in Chicago on the ground, he is an ally and accomplice to the American Freedman Justice. Now, he has, maybe you gave, you could put your information in the Jumbotron, the Megatron, so people can reach out to you and maybe ask you these questions. But right now, we're here to talk about American Freedman reparations, not ask questions to Gabe. So, true, if you could be uh, so kind to, to talk about that, I would really appreciate that. If not, we're going to have to go on to the lovely Miss Lioness. Yeah, and I appreciate you also. So, no, real quick, that's, that's very that's disingenuous. I'm sorry, wait, wait, that's Sister Chantel, hold on. Cool. Hold on, underground, you will shut your mouth. I don't even know who you are. That's very disingenuous. You can now donate to the United Sons and Daughters of Freedmen. You are now a listener. Donate to the United Sons and Daughters of Freedmen. Baron and Dion, I don't know why the hell y'all are in this space. You can also donate to the United Sons and Daughters of Freedmen, donate to the U.S. Freedmen Project, donate to DMV Freedmen, donate to Amend the Mass Media Group, donate some money, donate some money. Matter of fact, salute to the homie brother Muko out there in Baltimore. Be more codified. Donate some goddamn money. I don't give a damn about your opinions. We're doing reparations work right here. Um... So, yeah. Okay, so, I go did, ahead. yeah, like I did just donate this morning when I woke up this morning, so, you know, Thank you. yeah, shit, I love my people, and I love Baltimore, Baltimore got a spirit that's everlasting, and I love y'all over there, so, y'all continue to do the work, I ain't had that much this morning, but I did donate this morning, so thank y'all, and I'm gonna leave you alone, Gabe, and do we need reparations? Of course we do, we've been blocked out for so many times, wisdom, you know, we deserve everything that we get right now. Everybody know what we went through. Everybody seen what was taken from us, what was burning down from the churches to the houses and everything. Our brothers and sisters getting marched down till this day, our children, everything that we're going through. No, no. My most thing that I always, like I was just out here not too long ago and one where thing you, that gravitated you, to me, where, where are you from? one thing I'm from New Jersey. Okay, you're from Jersey. Are you then? One thing. Now? Say that one. Say it again. Are you in Jersey now? Currently. Of course. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm in New Jersey yeah. now. Anything else you wanted to say? Because I want to get to the hands. Uh, people have been waiting. Patiently. You don't cut me off about three times now. So whatever. Well, you, you enjoy did, the you rest did, of your day. I'll, I'll cut you off again. You did get off topic a few times, but you know you're speaking now. You said what you had to say. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Don Mulio, I don't know why you're in this space. You, you you said some things too. You can be dropped down to listen. I'm not here for the bullshit. This is not a nigga shit space right now. But um, 
Okay, Lioness, Lioness, salute to you. And it was a great reparations rally, which I was there. I saw you. You are a beautiful woman, and you're a great speaker. We appreciate the good work you do. Uh, you said you're an educator, so much respect to you. Did you want to chime in and talk about the book? Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for your time by the prime, Sister Queen B. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to also go back and listen to the particular excerpt from this space and from the second edition. Um, in all transparency, I have not read the second um, edition since 2020. So that's like almost three years from now. And so since I missed the beginning of the space, um, I would sort of be looking for cliff notes online and sort of cramming in order to fit into the conversation. And I also do want to respect um, the intention that you have for this space. So I do want to just comment on one point as it pertains to our lineage based reparations. I do believe that I do disagree with Dr. Darity and I guess Gabe, if he agrees with this statement um, and other folks. Uh, but this is an opportunity for me to have this conversation with my fellow freedmen and people of my lineage. So, Gabe, you're not welcome to have that conversation with me in all transparency. But I do disagree that reparations um, do not happen or cannot happen at the state level. I do believe that acts of atonement will fall under the restitution and or uh, satisfaction uh, pillars of reparations because we know that there are five pillars, compensation, restitution, re rehabilitation, satisfaction, and guarantee of non-repetition as defined by international law and also as articulated by our sister um, Camilla Moore um, when she was at Revolt. She did remind us in the audience about that definition from a legal standpoint. So I'm also leaning into um, exploring the idea and the, the real tangible reality of reparations happening at the state level, but falling within those two pillars. Again, those two pillars, um, in my opinion, would be rehabilitation and satisfaction. I would love to explore that um, idea uh, a lot more. Um, so I came up here to say that I think that this will be an ongoing discourse. I know I did open up um, this conversation also with our brother Marcel. Um, and then the final thing is a statement. This is not a uh, brother prime. I do not want to disrespect you or your space, but I just have a general statement to make before I drop down, which does not require a response, but, um, I would love to talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, Brother Prime, if you would like to. Uh, these tweets have been brought to my attention after Gabe uh, paraded himself as a reparationist. Uh, one tweet was from yesterday. It said, the indigenous Black advocates have found me and they are mad. I find this to be highly disrespectful um, as we are not just indigenous Black advocates. We are also freedmen, descendants of slaves, um, foundational Black Americans, etc., and to condense any of us or part of our lineage to the indigenous black advocates is highly disrespectful. Um, the second tweet is uh, there is no such thing as state reparations, which I just addressed. Um, and then the final thing is, well, quote, well, I got the hate I was expecting today. Good luck, folks. I'm going to remain focused on the positive end quote. I bring up the last tweet and I'm going to drop down because when a white man steps into a black space and makes allegations of hate or harm, there have been historical and there are current consequences um, to that for black people. And so when we're talking about being on online spaces, you know, folks have loved to create a narrative of black identity extremism or trying to uh, pigeonhole those of us who are very, very active um, and have been active in the community and very vocal as some sort of, uh, you know, hate group. And so I was just uh, offer Gabe. Um, and I'm saying this also not just as an educator, but also as an expert in anti-racism and particularly in, in undoing anti-black racism. I've trained thousands of educators literally around the country since 2016 on undoing internalized white supremacy and, and anti-racism by coming into black spa spaces and playing victim when you are being questioned and being vetted, um, it has other implications. And so um, I just wanted to say that as you explore the idea of being an ally, I, I offer that you also explore the idea of knowing your place within Black society. Thank you for allowing me to speak and I'll land my plane. Okay, Lioness, we can uh, talk on the uh, back channel if you want. You, you, I think you uh, suggested that we do that, but um, okay. Uh, Gabe, did you want to say anything? You, she did uh, say, I guess, address some things. I want you to uh, respond. <clears throat> well, I, I want to start by apologizing because I was invited into the space and, you know, I didn't really have any intent or interest in 
being a topic of conversation here. Um, this morning I was invited into a space and, or was it yesterday? I don't remember the day, the morning after by the Marcel um, uh, space, um, I, I was invited into a space and um, when I, when I went in, I, I fairly quickly picked up three things. One, there was some uh, anger because I advocate specifically, I use the, the language of Friedman. And I think, you know, we, are, we understand why, why that is. Friedman as opposed to other potential uh, designation. And there's some, I understand that there's a movement that identifies, um, you know, indigenous uh, folks who, who identify themselves as, as black and are frustrated that there's this kind of split. And so this was, a, as far as I could tell, a space of people who share that um, perspective. They were angry clearly at Marcel for hosting a space with a white dude is, um, you know, how I, I was described. And then shortly after that, for whatever reason, I was bumped out of the space. And then there was kind of a flood of um, what I perceived to be fairly aggressive language, including, you know, uh, tweets about my appearance and other, other stuff that I, you know, I consider to be aggressive enough that, uh, you know, I think in the parlance of Twitter, they were, you know, these people were being haters. And that's that's fine if people don't think that's appropriate language. I have a record that, you know, people can look at. In any case, um, I'm, I'm willing to continue uh, engaging around this stuff, but that's not what this space is for. Um, as long as I'm back on the stage, I'll mention that my friend um, Arthur Ward has a, a five Friedman website, firefriedman.com. That's a reading group. It encourages people to form groups with at least five people to read from here to equality. And, and we actually also have um, copies of the book for people who haven't accessed it yet. And we're happy to send that out um, to anybody in this group or, you know, if you know other people who would benefit from that. Um, Friedman Absolute is Arthur's. And I encourage people to read that as well. Arthur is an extraordinary, in my opinion, he's a, he's a powerful intellect in um, in these spaces, he Freedman also has Elder. something. And American Friedman Elder Arthur is an OG. He's a real one. Absolutely. He is a real one. He is a real one, and he hold he holds me accountable just about every day. I get calls from Arthur about uh, the work that we're that we're doing, um, and so he has a yeah. The, the, and and so that's a terrific site where he he basically is just doing a blog, um, a series of, of um, essays. On a, on a blog roll. And then he has started a new um, site called fivefriedman.com. Five and it's really just an organizing tool in his view. Um, so people can sign up there, they can comment there. And so, for example, someone could say, hey, I'm, you know, I live in, you know, X location. I don't have folks around me that I have been able to form a circle with. Um, so hook me up with other people if you're aware of them being here. Or, if people have a group, but they'd like some copies of the book to help kind of facilitate conversations happening, um, that that's a space where, where that happens. And again, I apologize for the other stuff. You know, this is the, this is what it becomes complicated. Like, as you said, and I think you, um, you put it so well, people become sort of fascinated by the, the white person in the room sometimes, and that can be problematic. I don't do a lot of spaces for that, for that reason. Understood. Um, we just got to remain focused, and uh, that's what I'm here to do as the host, to stay focused on the topic and to stay focused on the American freedmen, regardless of the white people being in the space. Uh, we have to stay focused and uh, accomplish the goal. Accomplish the goal. Thank you, Queen B. I know you have to step away, but you have been a great um, hostess, and you did a great job. This was your first time, so you're a natural. But, uh, uh, Freeman Absolute, fivefreeman.com, um, and uh, some other things. Uh, I forget the other ones, but yeah, that, that's that's the work being done or the websites and information you can uh, check out. FreemanAbsolute.com and fivefreeman.com, just to name a couple. Um, we got not Volvo. Volvo, what's, what's good, man? You wanted to... Uh, and yeah, what's yeah, what's good, my brother? I kind of jumped the gun. I wasn't sure what the space was, but I thought it was like uh, we we were discussing like I, ideas for reparations. So I kind of jumped the gun. I didn't know that this was like a 
like uh, y'all were discussing the book. I didn't. Yeah. I went. I never heard of the book. I I, I, I apologize. What you never heard of the book from him? Never heard of it. Oh my goodness. Well, let me say it again. This is a book. It's a real thing. I actually have it. We have been reading it. So, it's two books, actually. We are reading the second edition. I have read the entire first book, so the original, and it's both called From Here to Equality, Reparations for Black Americans in the 21st Century. Please write that down and read that book. I would say that's a baseline as far as the education and the information, and I say the elevation of the consciousness in this reparations movement. So, Bobo, I mean, respectfully... You got to step it up a little bit <laughs> if you haven't, you said you wasn't even aware of the book. Uh, you got to uh, read the book. So um, this is the second day I've, I've done the space, actually reading the book. Queen B was reading. Yesterday I did a whole uh, reading of the preface. So uh, I'll continue to do this so you can uh, read along and come along with us if you if you have time. All right, Bobo? Is is this the book by William, hold on, William Dart, Darty Jr.? Yes. Dr. Okay, okay. Darity Jr. and Kirsten Mullen. Okay, I'm going to order it on my candle. Okay, no problem. And they are both American freedmen, by the way. Oh, it's two books? Yeah, it's two. <laughs> I just told you it's original, and then they got a second edition. So if you want, you can get both. I would say start with the original um, and then get the uh, second edition. But, you know, whatever you choose, it's all good. Okay, I'm going to get on it right now. I should have been doing my homework, so I'm, I'm glad to pull my coat on that. It's all good, man. I, I'm not pulling it. The next coat. time I see you, I'm going to have some information for you. I appreciate that, and I respect yeah. it. Yeah, I'm not pulling yeah, it. Just, I'm glad you was honest, and we're here to exchange information. And yeah, when, when I say pulling you, I, um, I kind of got a street vernacular. I mean, uh, I'm glad you... Uh, huh? I know what you mean. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying with respect because I appreciate you and I like you, so there's no need to be uh, hostile or anything towards you. But there were some enemies in here like Dion and uh, some other uh, cowards and trolls. So they got out of here and they knew their place in this freedom space. And they do not get a chance or opportunity to speak. Uh, I'm done destroying them and I'm quite uh, tired of just destroying them publicly on these Twitter spaces and them being obstructionists, so they're not going to be obstructionists in this space that uh, I am uh, the host of. So, all right, Volvo, thank you for that. Um, no taxation without reparations. Hey, how you doing this evening? Blessed and unstoppable. How Praise you? God for that. I'm trying to I'm trying all to right. be like you when I grow up. <laughs> hey, don't be like me. I'm a I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> no, you're uh, not. No, you're not. I've heard you spit fire in these spaces, <laughs> and you are a real one. I, I really think highly of you. Stuff. I think highly of you. I want you to know that. So, yeah, I do want to be a little bit like you. And I, uh, to Volvo Rants that just spoke, just because he said he had a, uh, he speaks in the street vernacular, I said, oh, that's worth a follow. So I followed him. <laughs> uh, love my street people. <laughs> love them. Love them. Um, <laughs> I just want to say one thing because I've been listening to the conversation about Gabe and here's what I want to say. I know Gabe personally, but I'm not here to talk about me and Gabe's relationship personally and, and the good things that I know about Gabe. Here's what I want to say. I get it. First of all, he is. He's white and he's in our space and he's been here for some years and he does. You, you do have to test the spirit, but you should be testing the spirit with everybody these days and times because uh, we got more that look like us that's against us than uh, uh, those that don't look like us, truth to tell. And so um, if you, the only thing I want to just give you people a heads up on is that if you can't uh, see white people in a space at this level, then surely you can't imagine uh, the white face that's going to cut the reparations check because it ain't going to be nobody black. I can tell you that for a fact. A white man going to sign that uh, thing, if not a white woman. Who knows? That treasury check I'm talking about. So uh, get in where you fit in and and count your blessings when you can. Because it's going to be a long time when you're not going to be able to do that if you're fighting for the full freedom of movement in this country for black folks. And I just want to put that out there. Hey, Gabe. 
Okay. How you doing? I'm good. Good. Thank you. Uh, for you know, I I really love you hosting these spaces because you ain't playing no games with people and you ain't taking no shorts. And I like that about you. <laughs> I'm God. Bye, y'all. No doubt. And we love you right black. We love you right black. Miss No Taxation. And I appreciate you. I've heard you speak in the other spaces. And you are also another real one. And you um, represent the divine freedom and femininity that is needed for our women and among the sisterhood. So thank you for that. Um, keep doing what you're doing. Miss Lioness, uh, Tia, Just Eve. I see her with the Pick Me podcast. Um, it's I Love Clarity, a.k.a. I Love Free Foods, I Love Free Drinks. You know, I'm going to get on you. It's been a while. Where you been? Hope you're okay. Happy New Year to you. It's I Love and uh, all the people in here, the homie Cognitive. What up, Cognitive? We got a great space in here, family. Thank you for the um, for tuning in and listening in. I'm going to probably shut it down because it is Friday. I'm going to be turning up. I go hard for the American Freeman, so it means I play harder. So, that being said, if y'all want to do some last words, please do that. Um, we can start with uh, um, let's go with uh, Volvo, Mr. Street Vernacular. <laughs> I appreciate you, brother. I just want to say we need a Freeman's ID number. Appreciate you letting me speak. <laughs> I love how you ended off on that. The Freeman's social security number. I respect that. I think that's a great idea. Hopefully, you was able to uh, message um, Chris out there in Cali. Uh, don't forget to come to that hearing as well. They, he answers a lot of those type of uh, questions as far as SB 189 and AB 3121. He was directly privy to that um, specific information because I know you got some questions about that. I don't want to misinform you and, and give you some wrong information. Even though I may have an idea, I want you to get it directly from the horse's mouth as they say um brother muko what's good man we more freedmen on deck be more codified uh, i just want to say man big ups to you the space your shit is always correct always in effect i'm sorry that i even diverted that to uh gay <laughs> but i needed that so list <laughs> <laughs> it's needed. We gotta be careful when we see white people. I, right. I appreciate. It. I I respect it. I'm not mad at our, our people who's like, oh, we got a white man. But this is how I was at the reparations rally. I loved it. The greatest rally of all time. Salute to Tyreek. Real talk. Real talk. Organizers. Salute to you. I met you there. Absolutely. I met you, cognitive, and many many other people. I saw the homie Racer, Toretto, Tony. Um, and a lot of other people there, just Eve, you know, a lot of people, people on the ground. When you say Twitter don't matter, that's a lie because Twitter translated into 3,000 to 4,000 people at that goddamn reparations rally within short notice. So this Big is facts. a part of the work. This space, this space and me reading and Queen B reading from here to equality, reparations for black Americans in the 21st century. This is a part of the work. That's it's a part of the work. Big facts. Big facts. I just want to give it, uh, yeah, just, just encourage everybody to um, not just read this book once and not just read the second edition because the first edition was on fire. So I haven't read the second edition yet, but I have read the first edition. And if this is, is uh, if, if this is anything like everybody is telling me, it's even better than the first edition. So um, thanks for thanks for definitely holding this space prime, and I will be back in it next time. And um, Gabe, I will be waiting on my master list, brother. Thank you. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Uh, we do got to hold white people to task, as we should. And uh, uh, thank you for that. Uh, even asking that question, I. I not gonna uh, go against that and us being cautious when white people are around or even uh, 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 black people as well they we have a history of traitors being among, among us so um hold on let me see we got the homie tony then we could go to uh soul soul the homie soul djc but uh yeah let's go Shout out to the family again, Friedman, Royce and Bo, brother Muko, my brother Cognitive. I really grew up with him 
everybody else in the room. Uh, y'all know I always say, make sure y'all got y'all tools and y'all stay safe out there. Keep y'all head on the swivel. I love y'all. But I also want to throw this in, too. I'll be damned if somebody get on this mic and tell me to get, get in line or get in where I fit in with some people that owe us a motherf- owe us uh, the motherfucking world. I'll be damned if I sit there and let somebody who owe me money tell me, hey, boy, take this check. You know, nigga, you owe that to us, motherfucker. Don't come at us like that ever again. That's disrespectful as fuck to tell us to get in line like that. And I love y'all. And we love you too, Tony. Now, Tony, <laughs> Tony is a real one during the reparations rally. He was doing patrols. <laughs> Tony is like 6'10". <laughs> he was on the job. I'm sure he wasn't paid security, but he might as well have been paid security. <laughs> That man was everywhere doing patrols and everything. That man is Big facts. He's on our side. He's on our team, Team Freeman. So he's definitely a, a great asset to have. Uh, hold on. Let me see. Uh, I don't know what happened to Racer. Maybe he had to step away. But salute to the homie Racer who was also there at the reparations rally. Um, I'm going to go to Seoul. Uh, who did you boycott? And then Gabe, who everyone wants to hear from. <laughs> Yeah, I was also in the reparation rally as well. Salute to uh, Prime, uh, Tony. I, I knew there was a I knew there was a tall motherfucker there. I didn't know it was him. Uh, Cognitive, uh, April. Who do you boycott? I saw Racer Bow there as well. Yeah, really, I came up uh, in the stage to hear about the book and not pay attention to Mister White Man. But I read the first edition. I did. I, I said all this in the back channel, but I'll say it out loud too. And from here to equality, the good doctor laid out the moral and historical case for a federal program to pay reparations to the black descendants of enslaved ancestors, a.k.a. the freedmen. The doctor, they do not restrict their justifications to the terrors and the horrors of centuries of slave labor and the slave trade, but recognize the legacies of the black codes and Jim Crow regimens of the South as well the informal de facto racisms of the North and the numerous judicial decisions and obscenely colorblind laws that maintain freedmen and a oppressed and marginalized status, not simply able to acquire wealth and security, but prevented from doing so and often punished violently for seemingly to secede. Uh, the good doctor responds to concerns and counter arguments and offers a plan to make Reparations are reality for the American freemen in the 21st century. Should reparations be paid? Hell yes. Can it be done fairly? Hell yes. Can it be afforded? Hell yes. Should it be read? Should this book be read? It's a fuck yes. Excuse my language, but uh, I think everybody should read that book. I uh, haven't got to the second edition, um, but I will buy the book shortly. I'll land my plane. No doubt, no doubt, and talk your shit, man. Talk your shit. We are unfiltered here. Uh, we turn up, and anybody who disrespects, like uh, some earlier white man who came in here, talk about I don't really know. Then when I gave him detailed explanations and solutions, he still's like, well, I don't really know. Yeah, you, you're getting the fuck up out of here. You're not gonna uh, give your opinions, and, and your opinions don't really matter. We're already on the ground doing the work, so that's just how it's it's, it's gonna be that way. It's not a discussion. It's not a debate. Our reparations are not thriving in the country that our ancestors built. Not surviving, but thriving. We are here to thrive and live. We are here to thrive and live a great quality of life in this country. So thank you for that, Soul. And <clears throat> Miss T, don't be afraid to invite white people. Just know that when they come into this space, they will know their place and they will be respectful. You know, when I ask direct questions, I don't like people avoiding them. And, and uh, dancing and, and, and running away. Like, it's a simple yes or no questions. Then you can go into your babble about uh, whatever. But, you know, I ask a direct question. Do you support it? Yes or no? I don't need a, a Oswald Bates answer. <laughs> it's very simple. Just like I explained to the white man earlier, you support reparation for the Jews. It's so clear. It's so transparent. But when it comes to the American freemen, oh, I'm not really sure about the logistics. Then I gave actual numbers of trillions of dollars. He's still not sure. So you can get the fuck up out of here. That's it. You're removed. And support and donate to the organizations and advocacy groups like 
United Sons and Daughters of Freedmen. That would be USADOF.org, um, USFreedmenProject.org, and um, CJEC, NASD, NASD LA, Freedmen Absolute, all of those things, man. So anyway, let me let me close it up. <clears throat> um, who did you boycott? Did you want to say something? We closing up. Last word. No, I pretty much said it all the first time. You hit it on the nail. Much love to the family. Um, it's a lot of hard work ahead. It's going to start with the consciousness. If the consciousness of the black community get re-educated on the plight that started with our ancestors, half of the battle is already won. It all hinges on whether or not the masses of us get the right information and education as to how all this was put into motion. And I do appreciate, I don't know, Gabe, I did see a couple of posts on my Twitter feed. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to take your word for it, Freeman. Uh, it will serve us well to have allies, but that does not mean that I have crossed that line of trusting any ally until they prove that they are allies then I will decide whether they can be trusted. Long as there's clear understanding that allies can step forward all day long. But proof is going to take proof that you are a true ally. Right. The conversation is necessary to get an understanding because uh, this fight is not going to end until this sorry country pay that reparations or watch their destruction. They got two options. Pay the debt or watch America crumble to the ground. That's how I feel about it. I don't know about the rest of the black community, but uh, I'm looking forward to how it's going to unfold. I hope I live long enough to see how it unfolds. Because they couldn't pay enough in reality for the evil that they have done. But hopefully they'll have a come to Jesus moment and pay the claim, pay the debt. Just drop to your knees and have that come to Jesus moment. I just, I know it can happen. So thank you, Brother Freeman, for your time and the rest of the family. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening uh, sometimes. I can't ramble, but, uh, you know, I'm here to listen as well. I'm a great listener, so I like to listen. I got two ears for it. Um, uh, let's go to Gabe, and then uh, I think Brother Muko wants the last word. So, Gabe, talk to us. And speaking of consciousness, it absolutely does start and end with the consciousness. I myself have American Freeman consciousness. A lot of us in here have the Freeman consciousness. I would say Gabe has the Thaddeus Stevens consciousness. Gabe, you want to talk to us? Last word. I, I appreciate you so much. I just want to um, express some gratitude. And also say I understand uh, I'm, a, I'm always a guest in these spaces. And some people aren't going to be glad that I've been invited to these spaces. And I recognize that. that that's about the history we're talking about. And, and people can start and end with a lot of anger towards me. And in my view... That's not necessarily unjustified, even if in my own mind, I think I'm a good person. We all think we're good people. At the same time, it's a lot of pain, trauma, and there's a, there's a thing that has happened over centuries that you can't just be nice and people are going to forget that you're part of the group that has oppressed another group for hundreds of years. So I recognize all of that. Um, I just I continue to have gratitude because there are a lot of beautiful people in this movement who have embraced me. I do my best to do what's right. And the truth is, you don't know if a white man is an ally until he's dead. You're not going to know whether in the end I'm going to betray the movement until I'm not alive to betray it anymore. So I recognize that there's good reason for that suspicion. And I'm just going to do the best I can every day because really we can't do anything more than that. So thank you. Thank you again for your time, everyone. I appreciate you. 
thank you for uh, doing the groundwork out there in Chicago. Listen, with people like Marlon and Arthur, people out there who are in Chicago who um, support you, I have to listen and respect it because those guys are on the ground. <clears throat> I'm not in Chicago. I would love to go to the shop and see what that life is like, see what the culture and the history and the spirit is of Chicago is, but I've never been. Maybe one day, especially hopefully when you become the uh, alderman or city councilman. Of, uh, We'd love to have you. Fifth Ward, no doubt, no doubt. All right, Brother Muko, last words. Talk black to us. Definitely last words. Just want to point out that Brother Prime definitely executes every time. And when uh, the white supremacists are using buckets and buckets of words, you did exactly what the hell you were supposed to fucking do. Get them the fuck out of there. Because that's time wasted. So, uh, unapologetically, you know, black first. I love y'all. And uh, Prime, keep being Prime. I appreciate that. Um, we also had some uh, melanated people in here who wanted to try to shift the discussion. And I don't allow that either. Especially the ones who know I don't fuck with them. <laughs> Why are you in my space? I've been giving y'all work. <laughs> so you come to the guy who's been destroying you and slaying you. You come to my space and then you want to talk? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. So you know I'm going to destroy you even more. Now that I have Twitter power, you won't even speak, especially when you're being an obstructionist and, and uh, causing contention against the reparationists who are actually literally doing the work on the ground. Get the fuck out of here. Anyway, thank you, family, for joining us. This was, this was a great read, a uh, great space, and it was a great space in particular because it was due to your support and your listening. Had a lot of people in here. Um, people want to hear the message, and that's very important to me personally because I want to work with the American freedmen. I want to work with the people who are willing to receive that message and the reparationists who are willing to execute this message in everyday life and actualize, actualize and accomplish justice for the American freedmen. This is not a dream. This is not a dream. This is a reality. And we will make it a reality when we impose our American freedmen will on the powers that be who are trying to impose their will on us. We are uncontrollable. We are uncompromising. And we will not be stopped. We will not be stopped, especially with the American freedmen at the forefront and with allies, the very few and far in between allies like Gabe, like Gabe. So that being said, I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much. Give a salute to Gabe. We got Who Did Your Boycott, Tony, Brother Moko, Queen Kandake. I see Tia in here. I saw Black Native. Uh, we got Miss Isla B. Wells. <clears throat> we got uh, Christy Love, uh, Davey Jetson, a.k.a. Eat, Op, Orc, Ah, uh Ah. -uh. Salute to you. I got to ask you that question one day if you know about that. It's a womanista, Miss T. White people. You can come into this space, but again, you, you, you will know your place, and when we ask you questions, you will answer them. If not, you will be removed. I don't play no games. I don't play no games. Anyway, great space, family. Have a blessed day. Happy New Year, and peace. Friedman first. Family.